Welcome back, friend of a friend. Uh, so, I got something in the mail that I think is pretty cool today. I'm going to go ahead and get it set up. Uh, it's probably going to be a quickie one tonight. I'm not trying to spend a whole lot of time on this because i got to work on my laptop as well. But anyway, what starts with A and ends with aluminum? That's right, I got this in the mail. It is my boxy pixel aluminum Game Boy Advance shell, and uh, this is how it came. It actually came in this cool little, well, cheap, but still cool pouch, um, and of course a box. Pop it open. We have here the front half, the back half. It comes with plenty of screws because you can't use your original screws. Uh, mine also came with a charge board the 3D printed adapter and a diode because you can't just hook a Game Boy Advance straight up to a lithium battery and I'm going to be dropping this bad boy in there. Uh, I'm rather fond of this shell so I'm probably going to reuse this shell for another build. I, I really like the, the green on purple and uh, but I really want to put this Game Boy in particular in there because it requires a uh, lithium battery conversion. And this Game Boy has my uh, brightness adjustable Aurora ribbon, which I'm playing with right now. And it's it's kind of power hungry, so I, I think it would work a lot better with a lithium battery than it would with the, the double A's. Uh, it works a lot better with the nickel batteries as opposed to the alkaline ones, but I'm still thinking with the kind of current that this thing draws, it'd be better. So what you need is a backlit Game Boy Advance, which I already have, um, and a lithium ion battery, which I also already have. Uh, these are the same cells that Boxy Pixel sells. His, his cells are these just with the different sticker on them. Uh, not that, not that any one in particular is better than the other, they're the same cell. Uh, I've already got a different battery connector soldered on this and I'm going to be reusing this connector. I just don't need nearly as much slack. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside for now. And I have not planned this out in advance, so excuse me while I, uh, while we, while we figure this out together, I guess. And I do have another Game Boy Advance here, just in case, uh, just in case I need parts. I do have I'm not, like I said, I'm planning on reusing this shell for another build, um, so I'm not going to be using the buttons that are in here, but if you're converting your existing Game Boy Advance, you could just reuse your buttons, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, one thing I'm going to have to pay attention to is you'll need to reuse your light pipe as well, so I'm going to use the one from this shell, hopefully I don't forget. But for those that are unfamiliar, the Aurora mod, which is what this thing is, it's a uh, it's a backlight ribbon cable from China, but it has built-in brightness control. It only works on the 40-pin motherboards, unlike the traditional mod, which works on the 32-pin boards as well. Uh, it has the positioning of the LEDs a little bit different. You can see that my ribbon cable is not all folded up like they usually are. Um, it is very power hungry and from what I have heard it is very difficult to install not because the soldering is fiddly but because the ribbon itself is very delicate and if you're not extraordinarily careful with it you can damage it and then it won't work for you anymore uh, apparently I got lucky with mine because I haven't had any issues and uh, I did post a uh, build guide to Reddit. I'll probably throw a link or something in there. I did not make a video, but, you know, live and learn, I guess. Okay. So cut that out. And that's what the uh, Aurora cable looks like. And you can see my wiring there. I'm just going to leave this all as one unit. But I need to set it aside for now. There's that light pipe falling out. I'm going to stick it back in here because first thing I have to get this ready or no I'm going to take the uh, LCD out hopefully I don't destroy anything 
because to convert this over to lithium, you need to remove your battery connectors. And this Game Boy's actually got really beat up battery connectors. But that's going to be all right. Oh, I need, because those are going to get real hot. I need some pliers here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my multi-tool. Because it is my favorite pair of pliers around. And uh, I guess I'll use my helping hands for this as well. Probably gonna have problems with this, but I'll see what happens. Apparently, my soldering iron is not hot enough. one of them. bent that one up a little which is kind of a shame because I was planning on reusing it. I already have a Game Boy Advance that I converted over to lithium which you know you might be thinking oh well, why didn't you just use that? Well like I said wanted to put this one in there but I'm thinking I'm gonna use these battery terminals to convert the Game Boy that I already converted back. And I was just cleaning up the solder there because it's kind of kind of crusty but now there's way too much all right that's good enough I can work with that all right should be done with this And hopefully I didn't just destroy everything. I'll put that over there for now. Okay. So, I need... You know, I did kind of mess up the pad there. Didn't lift it, but I started to. Okay, I need some wire. I think I shall use some 22 gauge this purple stuff. Oh, I can probably solder that afterwards. Okay. Apologies for the noise. That is my uh, AC kicking on there. So let's get started on the this part. So it does come with a diode here and you can follow the install instructions here. Uh, on BoxyPixel's website, but basically you want to put the side with the line out towards the Game Boy and you want to put it on the out plus side. So you can stick that in there and then you can actually kind of bend it and route it. There is a cutout within the uh, within the plastic that'll let you route it nicely. And for those who are wondering, because you're weird like me like that, uh, you cannot use the USB-C TP4056 module. You have to use the micro USB one. Unless you are prepared to sit there and file out your charging port hole. All right. Get that soldered in. Where are my fish? There they are. 
just cut off this extra here. These are the shitty ones. I did not get my money's worth out of those ones. Okay. You probably want to engage safety splints when you do that because that thing just shot off. Bounced into my lamp, but I'd have had a bad time if that was in my eye. Oh shoot, this came out. Shouldn't have messed with it. It was already in a good spot. Okay. Now I'm not going to mess with it. So, take our front half of the shell, drop our screen in here. Fits nicely. One of the fantastic things about boxy pixel shells is they're already designed for these AGS101 screens. You don't have to sit there trimming away. All right, now, I think this screws down, uh-oh. I foresee an issue, potential issue. My ribbon needs to go like that. That is going to make installing this a pain in the rear. Oh dear. Uh, oh, I have an idea. Let's get the LED light. And mine doesn't fit for some reason. Might be that it's might be the difference between aftermarket and OEM, or more likely, because this is a flat hole and not tapered. It's not there it goes. Oh. Okay. That's in. I'm going to be using these buttons here. Probably gonna switch them out when I get uh the black ones that I ordered, or even might swap over to the machined aluminum ones. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. What the hell am I doing? That was right the first time. I'm not sure if these buttons are new. I picked them up on AliExpress not too long ago. I rather like the color. I don't recall seeing them before. But clearly need a little bit of trimming. I'm going to use the same pads, the red ones, even though they're gonna clash a little bit, but whatever. It's what I have handy, and believe it or not, I don't have any gray pads. Stock. This just goes together same as you would on a regular Game Boy Advance. Make sure your D-pad is all nice and happy. Alright, now... I'm going to plug this back in here. that in here okay yeah no no issue we're good yeah and that feels pretty good I'm all, I'm happy with that okay so I'm gonna start screwing things down before I lose parts And if you lose your screws, like I did when I built this one, uh, these are just regular M2 machine metric. Uh, oh, what the hell am I doing? I already have a screwdriver. M2 Phillips screws. Of course, it doesn't really matter which, you know, if you use like Phillips or hex or whatever, it's all the same. At least all the thread is all the same. And 
one of the things I'm noticing about this shell, which I think is particularly cool, is he designed all the screws to be the same. So you don't really have to pay attention to what goes where. I'm just putting everything wherever the heck I want. They're all the same length. Okay. So you got the two motherboard screws there. I can flip that over and play with it all I want. Gotta be careful, some of these edges are really pointy and sharp. Okay, next is this thing, which, oh, I shouldn't have screwed that all the way down. Okay, so don't screw it all the way down. Because it's supposed to go in after. So we need some slack here. Oh, another thing I'm noticing, this in particular, is getting in the way of my uh, ribbon cable, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cut it off. And use the junk ones. That is, that's why I use the junk ones. I don't want to break my nice ones. Oh, well, that's cool. I guess now I don't have to bitch about the junk ones anymore. I just scored that and I'm going to snap it off there. That is very thick. Very nice part, by the way. Thank you. Okay, now that fits in. That shouldn't affect anything. And, oh, by the way, when you're building this thing, you want to insulate the, uh, well, actually, I don't really suppose it matters on this one. Never mind. On a normal Game Boy Advance, you want to make sure you insulate the back of the cart reader pins. Otherwise, they like to short out against the screen. Uh, but that's not going to be a problem here with how nice the spacing everything's all nice and planned out I'm really happy with this so far I haven't even put it together is where do I want to put the battery connector this is gonna end up going in this way I'm already liking the fit of that okay oh, I suppose I can finish tightening this down as well Now, I need to do the wiring. I'm going to use these battery connectors I got. Uh, you can buy these in bulk. I think I got like a 50 pack of both the male and the female on AliExpress for less than $5. I don't know. They were real cheap and I'm really happy with them so far. I've been using them in a bunch of different things and zero complaints so far. Right now I'm just adding some solder to the top of the battery terminal pads so that I can actually connect up my wires. Ideally you'd want to do this beforehand and if you are if you have a regular Game Boy Advance you definitely should but I had to I had to put that in, I had to put the motherboard in then the battery retainer or the battery bracket because of my particular mod. Okay, so now I need the wire. Oh wait, no I don't. No I don't. I don't need, I actually don't need the wire. Because 
I have battery connectors which have plenty of wire on them. So I am going to... I'm just going to leave that like that. Put a female battery connector onto the battery posts here. I lied. I'm trying to. I forgot you gotta hook up the battery to the Game Boy Advance as well. So I will just use. That should be easy. That is the ground. Try running that under. to tin your leads first. Then It's not perfect, but it'll do. Okay. And then that can go to. And there's no room to run that underneath, so you gotta run that up, up top. So in this case, it might have made sense to file out a channel beforehand, but if I've proved anything, it's that, it's that I don't think things through beforehand. a little bit more wire. I'm just measuring this out before I cut it off. Now I'm done with the wire. Well, the extra wire. It's not going to attach this. pulled some of the strands out. There we go. There's probably a better way to tin that. Namely, don't just try and do it on your desk. Oh, and we want to run this one under as well. Just so it looks nice and clean.
that side is soldered down. Now, and ooh, you know what would be smart? Heat shrink. Give me one moment. I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna use this stuff I found laying around. It should be good. I have no idea what size it is because it's not marked, and I threw out the packaging probably a few years ago. So I'm gonna cut off what's a little under an inch and entirely too much, but it's all right. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this leg so that it overlaps. And I'm going to slip this on here. Ooh, yeah. So, yeah, entirely too. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, no, that doesn't work either. All right. I want to keep this as long as possible to cover up the leg of the diode, too, but. need to be able to actually work with that. Okay. Go ahead and tin the diode here. And ideally you'd want to do some sort of fancy splice, but I think a solder block will be plenty. And I accidentally touched the end of my heat shrink, so it started getting small on me. But that's all right. Put that there. Use my supremely shitty torch. that down so that the wiring goes in this empty hole here and et voila okay so now where am I going to put this battery connector this is entirely too long I'm going to cut this off Whenever you're cutting leads off a battery, don't cut both of them at the same time. Or you can short your battery with your tool. Also, you shouldn't keep those the same length, but... Wasn't I just saying something about being a forward thinker? Or rather, not being a forward thinker? this down and these wires are a little bit of a small gauge here but I mean it's just a Game Boy Advance I mean it's not like it's a performance racing drone or some shit soldering iron down. Don't need it so hot anymore. Alright, so I'm not really digging this size heat shrink for this, but I will try it out and see if it works. And again, it's probably better to do an actual splice instead of just a solder blob, but... What do you expect from me? I don't even have a lighter that works.
That's good enough. It's not going to be moving around too much. Those will stay. Okay, now I need the other half because I'm going to have this in here like that. And one thing I could have done, I could have routed the battery wires a little bit different. Eh. I think it has, Boxy Pixel has them on the, I'll do it on this side like my other Game Boy. I know there's room there, yeah. That'll work. So. I'm happy with that. And then I just plug this in and I put it on backwards. Oh well. That didn't work out too well. I'm going to have to play with that. But the Game Boy still works, so that's a plus. We just need shoulder buttons. However, these go in. If they even go in. Oh, there we go. Just gonna kind of play with it. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm inserting the spring just a little bit so I can bend it, and then inserting the left side, and I'm sliding the spring the rest of the way home. And unfortunately you can't use your sides because they're milled into the shell, or fortunately, depending on your point of view. Power button, or switch, excuse me. Oh, and I'm forgetting something important here. I'm gonna lose all the screws, but you gotta take your metal shielding here. So I grab the other screwdriver. And on mine, it is just two Phillips screws, but I've seen some Game Boys with four. 
I don't know if it's just like a late production cost saving thing, but the boxy pixel shell also has four. But again, it comes with all the screws you need. I suppose you could only install just two if you're feeling frisky. But, like I said, comes with all the screws, might as well use them. That way when you take it apart down the line and lose parts, you have extra screws. <laughs> I really like the machining on this. I just I don't know, I really like this, this pattern, it's very soothing. It's almost unfortunate that it's on the inside. And this one is not going in smooth. Alright, so we're going to skip that hole. There might be something wrong with... Oh, this one's doing it too. Got the wrong screw. Let's try a different screw. No, I think it's a little bit of both. The screw went in easier, but this hole is not. quite threaded properly, I think. And this isn't the right screwdriver. I'm going to get a different bit before I strip it out. And all the way down, I don't like it. Oh, this one's going in much easier. Maybe I just happened to pick up the two, the two fucked up screws. A little rough at the bottom though. Nowhere near as smooth as the rest. So, try not to leave random screws on your motherboard. It's probably not good for it. And mine isn't going together. The battery's not fitting. I think it's these wires. I'm thinking I might end up filing a chunk out of that adapter to fit my wires, to fit my battery. so much easier when they're hot. <laughs> Funny joke that. I bent those at the wrong spot. Still not the right spot. I gotta bend those right at the end. That's probably not very good. 
but it shouldn't move too much, so I think it's going to be all right. Yeah, the cutout is just over here, so might be worth your time to stick the battery down or something. Oh, that'll work. Oh, but now my shoulder buttons come out. Much like the Game Boy Color shell, there are only four screws around the periphery, instead of the original seven. That's alright, you don't really need seven. I'm missing a screw. Oh, son of a diddly. Oh, never mind. Found it. See, this is what I said about missing parts. If you put the four in the shield there, when you lose your screw, you'll have an extra handy. What am I doing using that screwdriver? I'm going to have to take this apart a little and fiddle with this button. It's not springing up like it should. But, there we have it. Oh, apparently you don't want to tighten that down all the way either. Or you need to trim your button. In my case, I probably just need to trim that because it's aftermarket. Uh, let's try out some games, shall we? Regular Game Boy Advance game. What's interesting is that it, it actually sits a lot lower. So if you have like a fake cart or something, it'll actually probably fit flush. But that works nicely. Game Boy Color, this is that same cart I made the other day. That fits nice. This thing is solid as heck, man. All right. I have an Easy Flash Omega. I'd say that fits fine. And one more carp. This thing just got stuck in there crooked. It wouldn't come out. Like I said, these edges are a little sharp. Nothing that won't wear down. One more thing, this pinball cart here. It probably works fine in here. Yeah. The reason I want to test this rumble cart in particular is this thing has like a little lip here. I don't know how well you can see that. Right here and it actually does not fit in my uh, aluminum Game Boy Color here. It goes down that far and uh, it just stops going down. This notch should be hidden behind the screen but it doesn't... that's all you got. The tolerances are too tight. Uh, this is an early revision Game Boy Color shell. I don't know if this problem has been resolved on the newer ones. Um, mine's an older one. It doesn't have the the engraving on the back for the power switch uh, doesn't have I think the newer ones have a little LED hole for the charger 
Uh, the newer ones don't have that logo on them, so on and so forth. So I know he's made a revision to the shell, I just don't know if he's changed that. But it does work fine on the Game Boy Advance. And after that, you just need one more thing. You need a screen lens, and I have these two to choose from. I think I'm leaning towards the Latios one, just because I like the silver on silver. But I also have this Pokemon Center New York one. And they both fit absolutely fantastic. They drop right in. You know, there's very little wiggle room. But, uh, there we go. That's the aluminum shell. There's no, uh, no spot for a sticker, really. He has his logo here. It's engraved. I, I think it's pretty tasteful. I like it. And I really like this brushed aluminum finish. I was thinking about getting the, uh, anodized one but I it took me like three weeks to even decide which color I wanted and then finally I decided yeah let's just get regular because it's taken me that long to decide you know um, but yeah this is really cool I might end up sticking uh, a sticker on the back anyway like this has or like one of the Game Boy Advance SP stickers and just just kind of throw it on there like I did on my Game Boy Color just because I think it looks a little plain without something but there we go. There you have it. Thanks for watching. Quick little addendum before I go. Uh, to get the shoulder buttons working properly, I actually had to file them down right here along this edge. And this is the edge that slides into the shoulder. Uh, I don't know what, what you call it, like bezel, I guess. Uh, once you get that filed down, it seems to fit a little bit better. Uh, additionally, I had to tape the connector to the battery because it kept trying to wander off into the wilderness there and it would uh, prevent me closing it flush. Uh, and then the last issue, my power switch issues were entirely that. It's just the power switch. That particular one is shit. Uh, once you've got a good one in there, it goes right together. Um, you know, no clearance issues. Turns right on. So on and so forth. Let me get this screwed together real quick. Okay. Turns right on. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. There you have it.